Hello, and welcome to Tech Class. Today's Tech Class, we're going to be talking about email. Email, or electronic mail, is any transmission of electronic messages typically sent over the internet. It's really just a way to contact people using computers. Similar to postal mail, you have what is called an email address. The email address, just like a mailing address, is a way for somebody to send an email message to you. It's comprised of a username, the at symbol, which indicates that it is an email address and not just a website, and the domain name, which is the .com name, such as gmail.com. So example email would be username at gmail.com. A full email address looks something like this. There are many types of email out there. Today we're going to be focusing on the most common kind, webmail. The three biggest providers for webmail are Yahoo, Gmail, and Hotmail also known as Outlook.com. Today we're going to be focusing on Gmail, Google's webmail provider. So first we're going to go to gmail.com. This is where you type in your username and your password and sign in. But first, click the Create an Account button. You can see there's a bunch of fields for you to fill out information in. Type in your first name and your last name and then choose a username. A username could contain letters, numbers, or periods. You could choose any username as long as it's not already taken. So for instance, if you were to type your real name, it's probably already taken. You can click off of the field in order to find out. So yeah, you can always change that to whatever you want. Typically adding a number will help. But sometimes you have to do a little bit more creative. Instead of just using your real name, maybe you could come up with something interesting. And then, as long as there's no problems with it, you can go with that one. The next field is to create a password. You want to use a password that's at least eight characters. Make sure you don't use a password that would be simple to guess, but make sure it's something that you'll be able to remember. You want to use at least eight characters, including at least one number and at least one letter, and maybe a capital letter or a symbol, such as an exclamation point or a question mark. The more characters you use, the stronger the password will be and the harder it will be for somebody else to guess. Of course, you don't want to make it something that you won't be able to remember either. For a quick and easy password, think of a long phrase that you can use the first letter from each word to create. For example, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. If you take the first letter of each word and type it in, you get A-B-I-T-H-I-W-2-I-T-B. The number two is replacing the word two. Once you're satisfied with your password, you'll have to type it again in the second field, just so that they're certain that you've typed it right and that you know what your password is. Next, choose your month, day, and year of birth. It's important that you use your actual birthday because they may use this information to help you recover your password if you ever forget it. Next, they'll have you choose your gender, female, male, or other. Other is there in case you want to keep anonymous while you're online. If you want to type in your mobile phone, it could be used in case you forget your password. They can text you recovery options to your phone. If you don't want to do that, you can feel free to leave it blank. If you already have another email address, you should type it in the next field. Again, this can be used in case you need to recover your password. If you don't already have an email address, again, you can just keep this field blank. Unless you want Google as your home page, you can uncheck the default home page option. Now comes an interesting part. They want you to type in the number that shows up in this picture. This is to prove that you're not just a robot automatically entering all this information. If you can't tell what the picture says or if the text is too blurred, you can click the circle with the arrow on it and it will reload a new picture. 
You could do this as many times as you need to until you get a picture that you can actually easily read. Then type the numbers that show in the picture in the box below it. Check the box that says you agree to Google's Terms of Service and click Next Step. If everything went well, it'll say that you can create your Google Plus profile. Google Plus is essentially Google's version of Facebook. If you want, you can create your profile or you can hit No Thanks and skip that step. Okay, looks like we have a working Gmail account. Make sure you write down your new email address and your password, at least until you've used them enough that you can remember them. Make sure not to give your password out to anyone. Your email address, on the other hand, you want to give to anybody who you want to stay in contact with. That way, they can email you if they need to contact you. On the next screen, it will show a walkthrough of how to use Gmail. If you want to, you can follow through clicking the Next button. Otherwise, you could just click the X at the top. There we go. This is your inbox. It sees you already have three emails in the box. You can see there are three tabs, Primary, Social, and Promotions. The Primary tab is your main inbox, and most of your email will go there. The Social tab is for information from services such as Facebook and such. The Promotions tab is for advertisements from third-party companies. But again, the Primary tab is your main inbox. If you want to open an email, simply click on its subject and you can see the details inside of it. If you want to reply to the email message, simply click Reply at the bottom. Then you can type in your message and hit the Send button when you're done. And the message will be sent to the original recipient. If you want to send the message to somebody else, like if you think that email message is something that other people would be interested in, you can hit the forward button and it will forward the original message to the email address you provide. If you change your mind and don't want to send the message, you can hit discard and it will delete the message and it won't be sent to anyone. Once you're done reading the message, you can click the arrow at the top to go back to your inbox. Email messages you haven't read are in bold. Ones you have read, the bold goes away. If you want to delete a message, simply click the checkbox next to the message that you want to delete and click the trash can at the top. This will delete any messages that have check marks next to them. When you delete something, it doesn't actually go away permanently. It goes to the trash. Trash is a folder in your email where all deleted messages go to. If you've accidentally deleted the message, simply place a check mark in the checkbox next to the message and click Move to Inbox and it will go back into the inbox. If you want to delete more than one email message, you could put a check mark in multiple boxes at the same time and then click the trash can at the top. If you want to delete all the messages, simply check the checkbox at the top above all the messages, then click the trash can. This will delete all the messages that were on screen at the time. Any messages that are deleted will be sent to the trash and after 30 days will be permanently deleted. So if you want to undelete these messages, you need to do them within 30 days of deletion. If you want to create a new email message to somebody, you can click the Compose button. Then, simply type in their email address in the To field. Make sure you type it very accurately. Even one letter off and it may go to the wrong recipient. The field right below the To box is the Subject field. The Subject field should be used to tell the recipient what the email message is about. Just a quick brief synopsis of what to expect. If it's something important, Using a subject with the right words can make somebody want to open it that much more quickly. The field below the subject field is your message field. This is where you type the message that you want to send. Be sure to write your name at the end of the email message so people will know who it's from. Especially if you have a new email address, people won't necessarily know that an email is coming from you particularly. Especially if your email address doesn't match your name exactly. When you're done, simply hit the send button at the bottom. 
As you type a message, it is automatically saved, so even if you close the message, you can see it's been saved over to the Drafts folder. Drafts is for any email messages that have not been sent. You can click on the subject of the message, and then continue editing it, and then when you're done, hit the Send key, and it will send the message. You can also add things to the message before you send it, just in case you forgot something. And of course, this too is saved automatically in the background. If you change your mind and don't want to send the message, simply hit the trash can in the bottom right. It won't be saved in drafts, and the message will disappear completely. So be sure you don't want to send the message ever at all. If you'd like to add email addresses to your Gmail contact list, simply click the arrow next to Gmail at the top and click Contacts. This is your contact area. Anybody you send an email to will be listed here. You can click New Contact and then add the person's name by typing it in right away. Then you want to click on the email field and type in their email address. Again, you want to make sure that you type it in properly and that you don't misspell anything. If you want to add their phone number or their physical address or birthday, you can do that there as well. Once it's done, you just simply hit the Save Now button and it saves that person's e name and email to your contacts list. If you want to send an email message to that person, check the box and click Email at the top. The message box you saw earlier will show up and you can type in your subject and your message. Remember to hit send at the bottom when you're done. Or the trash can if you change your mind. You can always come back into contacts and edit your email address anytime. To return to your inbox, simply click the arrow next to contacts at the top and click Gmail. When you're done checking your email, you always want to remember to sign out. This way nobody else can have access to your email. Then be sure to hit the X next to your user icon. This will clear out your email address as well. That way, nobody else but you will know your email address. Thanks for watching, and feel free to come into our tech classes Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. and Thursday mornings at 11 a.m. for more in-depth coverage of our topics.